Across the causeway, Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin's first ever federal budget has survived a parliament vote. The supply bill was passed with a voice vote this afternoon based on lawmakers verbally indicating whether they support the budget. It will now move to a three-week-long committee stage of debates before a third and final reading is approved. At over 320 billion ringgit, the budget is Malaysia's largest to date. Now here's Malaysia Bureau Chief Shannon Teo with more from Kuala Lumpur. So Muhyiddin's budget has been passed today at the second reading, one might add. So what this means is that at the policy level, MPs have agreed and approved this budget. Now it will go through a committee stage, which means further debates on more uh, finer details in terms of what is allocated to each ministry and so on and so forth. This will last for the next three weeks before the last, the third and final reading uh, on December 15, and they'll take another vote there. Now, of course, you can defeat the budget uh, at the third reading, or you can kind of ambush the government at committee stage. But largely, this is uh, unprecedented, not conventional. Uh, if you have agreed to the budget at policy level, then you would debate and ask for small tweaks at the committee stage, but you would probably not um, defeated at, at the third reading uh, unless you have a very good explanation for it. So that's where we are with the budget. Now, where this leaves uh, the Prime Minister, well, it is uh, one would consider it a triumph for him, despite all the, 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 the noise we've had over the, the past three weeks or so about uh, MPs, even from his own coalition, especially from AMNO, which is his largest partner, uh, that they might want to defeat the budget, that they are unhappy with certain allocations or in fact, unhappy with the government uh, and how they've uh, perceived to have sidelined UMNO. All this did not materialize. And in fact, even for the opposition, they couldn't muster enough numbers to force what we call a division or block voting. So the budget was passed by voice. Um, the opposition, not enough of them stood up for the speaker to call for an actual vote. Um, so it was passed by voice. This is somewhat embarrassing for the opposition and people are asking the opposition and MPs now for an explanation. The press are pressing them for statements and, and explanations of how this came to be. So all in all, a, a good win for Muhyiddin, but Muhyiddin's not out of the woods yet. Um, he's, if, he, if he's going to celebrate today, he's celebrating in the middle of a minefield because his coalition is still weak. It's still at 112 MPs out of the 220 uh, in Parliament right now. Anything can happen. And in fact, over these next three weeks, uh, I, I'd say that you would still have to watch the situation pretty closely. Uh, for Malaysians, we are in a situation now where there was a lot of uncertainty about whether Muhyiddin will continue to be uh, Prime Minister after this, whether the government would still be there. Uh, it will be for now. Um, so what we have is less uncertainty, but the same amount of instability. Anything can happen uh, could happen if uh, the Muhyiddin government, uh, uh, you know, doesn't keep his guard up. Meanwhile, still on Malaysia, the country has imposed mandatory COVID-19 screening for 1.7 million work foreign workers. This follows a surge of infections in Selangor dormitories and factories run by the world's largest producer of rubber gloves. Senior Minister Ismail Shabri Yaakob said the first phase of screening will be carried out in states including Selangor and Penang. From today, authorities will also impose a fine of 50,000 ringgit per worker if employers house their foreign staff in crowded spaces.